Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode 15 of Retro Fires Guide. Let me straighten out that camera a little bit. There we go. Today, we're going to be talking about the Atari Lynx. This thing in my hand right here has the distinction of being the world's first color portable handheld, and it is a beast. Just look how big this thing is. Um, it is definitely pushing the definition of the word portable. It was released in September of 1989, and uh, it is, it, it, just for a point of reference, it's slightly bigger than a Sega Game Gear, so if you ever owned one of those growing up, which you probably would be more likely to own a Game Gear than an Atari Lynx, uh, I can tell you it is fairly large. This is not going to fit in your pocket. So this is the Atari Lynx up close. It was developed by Epix as the handy game originally. Uh, Epix was primarily a video game developer and publisher mainly known for a series of hits on the uh, Commodore 64. They also published some games on the Atari 400, which you can look at some of those on uh, my other video for the Atari 400. Uh, it runs games on a cartridge format. Um, and it was originally released for $179.95. So let's take a look at the cartridge. There is a cartridge for the Atari Lynx that is Zybots. Uh, it's actually a pretty decent game. And uh, it plugs into the back like so. Uh, just push it down. There you go. Uh, you also have your headphones port. Uh, Comlink, if you know someone else back then who had another Atari Lynx, you could actually hook them together. Much like the Game Boy Advance in years and years later, a power adapter, screen brightness adjustment, and volume knob. And that is pretty much it. So let's power it on and take a look. You probably won't be able to see too much. It's hard to film the screen on these guys. Uh, it has a 160 by 102 pixel display and a very, very, very short battery life because of the uh, the uh, backlight there is just super super power hungry. Um, it ended up selling fewer than seven million units altogether uh, by 1995. It was discontinued in '94 actually. Um, but the, you know to give you some contrast, the Game Boy had sold 16 million by 1995. So uh, you know it, it did moderately well for Atari, but not as well as they hoped. Um, so let's play a little Zybots. Let's see if I can tape this. So uh, here we go. So basically this is a, you know, kind of a third person uh, dungeon crawler type game. There we go. Um, let's see if I can get it to focus a little better there. So yeah, I mean, for the time, this is, you know, fairly advanced. Um, there are better games than Zybots, but this is just, uh, you know, one of the ones that I happen to own. Um, there are also a lot of weirdo titles on this, uh, on this, uh, console, like Kung Fu, for instance, is a, a really weird one. Um, Atari just kind of published a lot of weird titles back then, you know, it kind of harkens back to those days when, uh, you know, developers would just throw whatever they could at the, uh, the wall. Let's go there, and boom, next level. And this is like a uh, store of some sort, I think. All right. Entering level two. So uh, that's Zybots. Let's check out some other games uh, via that Dirty Word emulation. So we can, whoa. That's crazy. Uh, so let's check out some other Atari Lynx games. So the first game I want to talk about is California Games for the Atari Lynx. You're probably familiar with this one because it was released on just about every home console and computer at the time, uh, including the Apple II, the Master System, the NES, and the Atari Lynx. Uh, it's been completely redone for the Lynx. As you can see, all the graphics are different. But it's essentially the same collection of mini games uh, that uh, the other games are. This is Footbag, uh, which all I ever wanted to do when I played this is hit the bird. Bam! That's one of my favorite things about <laughs> Footbag. Um, there's this neat scaling effect too on uh, the half pipe here, which I completely suck at. I never could seem to grasp exactly how to do that. Uh, anyway, um, there's also some other fun events like surfing and. Uh, 
EMX, which I'll show you in a second. Surfing's pretty fun. Um, basically, it just consists of you pressing up and down. Are we having fun yet? I don't know. I guess that depends. And uh, here's a little BMX for you. Um, it's basically just an obstacle course, which you can uh, do different tricks on and crash like that. So, yeah, California Games. Uh, if you liked it on other things, you'll probably like it on the links because uh, it's pretty much the same game. Next up, we have Gauntlet, the third encounter, which is the third game in the Gauntlet series and a pretty decent uh, game here for the Lynx. You can play a uh, wizard, an android, a punk rocker, a pirate. Uh, yeah, it's a punk rocker. It's weird. Uh, gunfighter, Valkyrie, nerd, samurai, and uh, that's it. What advantage exactly would the nerd have other than speed? That's, that's so weird that you can pick a nerd. Anyway, uh, it's pretty much Gauntlet, just like all the other games. Uh, you go around, collect keys, and kill enemies, and uh, there's a lot of enemies to kill. Like, about a bazillion scorpions here in the first level. And, uh, yeah, so if you like Gauntlet, um, you might enjoy this one. Uh, it's a little more expensive than some of the other games. A lot of Lynx games are actually really expensive. But um, this is one of the more reasonable ones. You can pick it up for around 20 bucks. So uh, if you like Gauntlet, check it out. Next up, we have Kung Fu, one of the weirder titles for the Atari Lynx. Kung Fu is the kind of game that if I would have read about it in a magazine when I was eight years old, I would have thought it was awesome. Kung Fu, get it? Ha ha ha. But I was 12 at the time, and uh, I thought it was kind of dumb. And going back and playing it, it's kind of dumb. You're basically going around and beating up a bunch of things in your refrigerator. It has a story, as you can see here. You're a guy coming home. And uh, for some reason, you go into your kitchen, and uh, for some reason, you end up beating the crap out of different things in your freezer that come to life. Um, as you can see, you're a really huge sprite. Uh, you're some kind of green, jolly green giant kind of guy. And you go around beating the crap out of carrots and beets and all kinds of other vegetables. Uh, one thing I do like is those classic Atari sound effects when you pick up a an item there that's like straight from like the uh, 2600 days there um, but this is a pretty average um, if not mediocre title you uh, go from the left side of the screen to the right beating up things it's very repetitive and occasionally you'll fight a boss like that ice cube guy that I just fought there so uh, nothing much to write about here but uh, if you do like what you see the good news is this title is only about five to ten dollars so it's not really going to break the bank to pick this one up it's a uh, consistently that and i actually picked up a, a complete copy of this with box manual instructions and everything uh for i think eight dollars on ebay so uh, weirdly there are still people selling um unopened Lynx games that uh, never sold back in the day and uh, for pretty reasonable prices you can find some of those sellers on eBay so if this is something you like pick it up next up we have Ninja Gaiden 3 the ancient ship of doom and this is a straight-up port of the NES game um, the only thing is is it's an inferior port I would much rather be playing the NES version um, another con to uh, this version of the game is it's incredibly expensive. It's uh, consistently about $40 to $50, um, and that's just for the game itself. If you're looking for a complete copy, it could run even more expensive. But, um, you know, if you really, really like uh, Ninja Gaiden 3, Ancient Ship of Doom, which is uh, one of the harder Ninja Gaiden titles, I might add, um, this is a way you can play it on the go. And, um, you know, it's not terrible, but it's certainly not my favorite version of the game, like I was saying. So, um, the uh, sound is downright horrendous, as you can hear here. It's, uh, you know, unfortunately, um, the same music, but, you know, uh, made on the Lynx hardware, and uh, it sounds pretty atrocious. It's just not up to the job of recreating those excellent uh, Ninja Gaiden tunes. Next up we have Pinball Jam, uh, featuring Elvira and the Party Monsters, and uh, one cool thing about this game is about it has voice samples, as you just heard. Um, other than that, it's a pretty awful, you know, pinball game from the era. Uh, the physics are 
not very good, um, but you know, uh, it's not a terrible game. I've played worse. Um, it's an interesting title, uh, I guess you could say, um, because I'm not sure how many kids knew who Elvira was back then, but anyways. Next up, we have a port of Robotron 2084, one of my favorite arcade games of all time. Um, this is Robotron 2084 in all its glory. Uh, it's portable and made for the Lynx. One interesting design choice is uh, you continuously fire and you use the face buttons to change the direction you're firing. Uh, and you uh, just move your guy around, so there's no way to actually stop firing. Um, Basically, it had to be that way because, you know, this game in the arcade has two joysticks, uh, one for the direction of firing and then the other to move your guy around. So, um, you know, it's an interesting design choice. I, I don't know if I necessarily like it, but um, that's how it had to be. So next up, we have Rygar. Uh, this is um, a port of the arcade game. This is... I should note this is not like the NES version, so um, don't expect that. Uh, it pretty closely follows the arcade game, except that there are some few minor differences here and there. But uh, essentially, it is uh, you know a left to right scroller, um, and uh, you go around beating up monsters and collecting items. So uh, nothing um, outstanding, but uh, you know if you like the arcade game, you're probably going to like the um, Atari Lynx version. So uh, pick it up. Thanks for watching. Um, if you could subscribe, I would appreciate it. Um, since I moved YouTube channels, uh, I lost a lot of the subscribers I did have. So if you were one of those people, please resubscribe um, and uh, leave comments. Uh, until the next video, happy collecting.